welcome to another episode of the Preacher Girl podcast. So before we jump into this one, I've got to tell you a funny story. Yesterday, um, I was in my living room and uh, my husband comes up to me and says, the podcast was about makeup last week. And I was like, I know I did it. <laughs> He's like, I'm having a hard time watching the makeup podcast. Are you going to do another one? And I said, probably because my girls want to know how to use the Rebel palette. He's like, looking at me like, how am I supposed to get into Preacher Girl if you keep doing makeup? He's like, I'm not interested in the makeup. And so for a minute there, I kind of pulled back and I thought, I can't do another makeup tutorial. I feel bad about it. It's not going to enrich anybody's life. It's not going to help anybody. And then I remembered, this is not for him. This is for you. Preacher Girl was created for the daughters of God and makeup is a part of our lives and um so today while i show you a makeup look from the preacher girl rebel palette i also want to tell you um a story about a very serious thing that happened in my life that the lord has used somehow to bring it back around and maybe it affects some of you as well so if you're new here my name is pastor sharo this is preacher girl tv and we are so excited that you're here today we hope you enjoy the podcast now if you're brand new then you don't know that we have two brand new makeup palettes right now the pg classic and the preacher girl rebel palette and each of them are named um very specifically after prayer and after really really intense thought about what we wanted them to be called and today i'm going to show you a makeup look with this palette this is the hot palette the preacher girl rebel palette and the names are rahab and delilah and eve and hadassah and vashti and all the bad girls and the rebel uh, rebellious girls whether they were rebelling against god in some cases and some cases they were rebelling against sin so um It's just very, very hot colors. If you want to know the names of, of all the colors and what colors are in the palettes, then you can go back and look at last week's podcast and, and video blog, and the link is in the description below. So if you're ready, I'm going to put my makeup on, on my eyes, and just talk to you, tell you about what's going on while I do this, and then you can get a, an idea about how to use it. So um, this goes back to about 15 years um when i was 15 years old not 15 years ago trust me 15 years ago i was not 15 years old i'm gonna start off here i'm gonna show you the rebel palette but there is a really really great base and i like to use it as the base color for my eyeshadow let me just put my hair up so i can get it out of the way okay so when i was in uh, in my late middle teens um I, for some reason, started getting very, very stressed out. And, you know, it could have been because of issues in my family. It could have been because issues in my church. And as you guys know, as I, I talked about in Confessions of a Female Preacher, a female pastor, being a preacher's kid was very, very challenging. And... Um, And sometimes the stresses of being a preacher's kid really got to me. And not just being a preacher's kid, but I was an overachiever. In school, I always wanted to be extra good. Not because I wanted to be better than anybody else, but I just wanted to make my mom and my dad proud of me. And I'm a people pleaser by nature. I And that's what I do. So I just always wanted to be able to come home and show them that I did so great because I just wanted to be pleasing to them and so I pushed myself beyond what I guess I felt I, I was comfortable pushing myself doing and um, so what ended up happening in my life is that I became very 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 stressed out and I didn't know it because I would always try to find ways to cause my stress to, to be relieved and, and I don't know if some of you are like that today The, the real topic is trichotillomania. It's a real diagnosable psychological disease and it's where you pull your hair out. And you know, sometimes people get so mad. They say, she made me so mad I wanted to pull my hair out. Well, there is actually a literal disease called trichotillomania where you do pull your hair out. And that's what was happening to me in my life. Right now, I'm gonna go into Eve. That is the lime green color right here. And I'm going to take this flat stubby brush that comes in the Preacher Girl brushes. 
and just pick up quite a bit of it and begin to pat it on my eyelid. So just like this. So yes, I was telling you, I became super stressed out in my teen years and I didn't know, I didn't set out one day to say, you know, I'm going to pull my hair out or um, it really just started that when I, when I was reading, I would just play with my hair and sometimes some of the hair follicles are really coarse, so they're not as smooth as the others and, and I would wrap it around my finger and until one day it just, the hair would just come out. And I didn't even realize that my hair was coming out. And then when I was done reading and I looked on the floor, sometimes girls, there would be a hundred strands of hair on the floor, probably more. And it's not that I wanted to do that. I always had long, thick, curly hair. So it was easy to hide that, that my hair was thinning in certain places. And I would pull my hair out in in um you know really horrible places like the very top of my head because that's where the coarsest hair would grow but then it turned into after several months and and maybe even more than a year i started pulling it out from the very front of the crown of my head and by then i mean there was no access to the internet there was no you know i didn't have a computer or anything like that so i couldn't google it i couldn't check it out to, to see that there that this was a real thing i just thought something was wrong with me i was a um a nail biter too and i don't know if you guys know this but nail biting is a habit that is stress induced when you get nervous your hands go to your mouth and and you start you know doing that and i used to be as a younger kid, a nail biter, and I got embarrassed so many times, sometimes from the pulpit, for biting my nails that I had to stop. And when I stopped doing that, then I found something else to do. And it was pulling my hair out. And trust me, it took a long, long time before I could even talk about that because it was so humiliating and so embarrassing. And actually, the reason why I'm even talking about it now is because on Sunday, one of my girls from my church, a young lady came to me, beautiful, beautiful young lady, always has her hair up in a ponytail. And she said to me, she said, um, Pastor, I'm pulling my hair out. And she said it with such embarrassment and, and so much shame that I thought to myself immediately, it took all of the courage in her life to come and tell me this. I didn't have the courage to tell anybody. You know, um, as we continue, I'm going to jump down and use Magdala. That is this teal color right here. And so I already have the lime green and I've used in the crease of my eye, Ecclesiastes 311. And on the lid of my eye, that's Eve. And now I'm going to go in with Magdala, which is this beautiful teal color right here. And get a little bit on the brush like this. And continue my story. Yeah. So the uh, the young lady came up to me and she said, and I, of course I'm not going to tell you who it is. Now those of you who wonder what I'm doing with this, this is just the plastic protector that comes inside of the palette, and I'm just using it right here as a stencil to make the crease of that green part. Now you don't always have to do that. Most of the times I bl blend and make sure it's a soft diffuse color and not a sharp line like that. But the look I'm going for today, I'm gonna have a winged eyeliner that comes right at the bottom of that color. So instead of having to go back and clean up with concealer, I can just use this brush and use this stencil and just so how you want to do it, by the way, ladies, when you place this against your skin very gently, you want to you want to take the brush and go from on top of the plastic and then just sweep gently across your eye like this. I don't know if you can see that. And that's what creates sharp stencil lines. If you don't hold it um, firmly against you, the color is going to get underneath and get all messy. So what you want is a nice winged shape like that. Then I take the edge of this flat square brush and I go along the top of my crease, just like I did in the last look. Stop halfway right here 
over your lid. Stop right there. Don't take it all the way down. Sometimes you can do a look like that, but for this look, I'm stopping right there. Ta-da! See it? Okay. Let's do the same thing on the other side, and then I'll finish my story. So, yeah, the young lady told me that she was pulling her hair, and I knew that when she looked at me, she thought, you know, pastor is going to judge me. Pastor is going to think I'm crazy, because that's what I thought. And it was the most humiliating thing when my family saw it. And when you live with people in a house, trust me, they're going to know what's going on in your head eventually. I was always putting my hair in a half a ponytail to cover a bald spot that was this big at the top of my head. Because I had so much hair, it was easy to hide it for a while. But after a while, especially after a shower, after I'm upstairs trying to dry my hair out, and maybe my brother saw, maybe my dad saw, my mom saw, and they asked me, they, they couldn't understand it. My parents didn't know that was a real thing and, and that I wasn't the only crazy person in the world doing that. So, you know, having a, a counselor to go to or a psychologist or something like, you know, people probably have access to these days was not an issue for me. So, you know, we did the most important thing we knew how to do was pray. And we prayed that that the Lord would would deliver me. Because let me tell you something. At the end of the day, this is what the Bible says. It says that a woman's hair is her glory. And whether yours is blonde and spiky or long and curly or, or straight and silky or frizzy like mine, whatever it is, that was given to you as glory. And I, even if it's shaved off, you know, um, but... Satan would do anything to rob you of your glory. And whether it be in terms of your hair or your reputation or your ministry or your mission or your vision or your relationships, your marriage, your children, whatever it is that brings glory to God through you, Satan will not stop at anything to, to rob you of that. And in, sometimes it's your hair. Now, um, you see the sharp lines now. I don't leave it like that. I'm going to take a clean brush, or cleanish, and I'm just going to diffuse right here along the top. I'm going to leave the bottom edge sharp, but on the top here, I'm just going to just blend it in a little bit. I call it diffusing. It's an artistic term, but it really is blending, right? And I'm just going to do that in circular motions with the brush like this until the pink and the green kind of blend together. It forms like a... A brownish so when this young lady um, told me about what she was going through and and you know with tears in her eyes I, I hugged her and I said I want you to know that you're not alone and this is like how God works in my life there's nothing that I've ever had to go through or been through and I questioned that for so long and let me tell you friends it took years years for that hair to grow back and not only did it take years I lied about it I did I when I would go to the hairdresser and they would see that big bald patch on the top of my head and they would all do the same thing they would ask me what happened and I lied and said because I was so embarrassed I lied and said that I hit my head and and then they had to shave my head off on the top so that they could access the cut of course they could see the top of my head. They knew I wasn't cut on the top of my head. I'm gonna go in with a little black. Now this is an evening look. You don't wanna use the black. <clears throat> if you were gonna stay in the daytime, then stop at the greens. Let it be nice, bright, and fresh like that. But if you wanted to take it a little bit deeper, then black for shadows is such a good idea. Tap off the excess. Go back along the same line that you originally went and diffuse that a little bit using the stencil. Now look at what that did. It just sharpened that line ever so gently without that harsh eyeliner look, right? So kind of like what you're doing right now is just creating a gradient from black to teal to lime green. Yeah, the Lord has never let me go through something 
that was horrific in my life. And you might say, what's the big deal, Pastor Sharo? Um, you know, it's just hair. Honey, if you're a young lady and you're going through that, it is a big deal. It is a very big deal. And that's the worst part. When I grew up and I researched that and I realized, wait a minute, there are thousands of people that suffer from this of all ages, all races, all descriptions. But do you know that the most affected demographic are teenage girls? Yeah, teenage girls, they might not be smoking weed and they might not be cutting or getting tattoos because those are all issues of the same thing. You know that, right? Yeah, when people bloodlet, cut their arms, get tattoos, it's just because that pain feeling and that uh, blood releasing kind of gives you um, an endorphin release, which is what pulling a hair follicle does. Because it's funny, if somebody pulls my hair, I want to I wanna kick them because it hurts. But yet I was pulling out hundreds of strands of hair. But I've learned that if the Lord lets me go through it, somebody's going to learn from it over and over. That happens in my life and it happened again. And I told her my story. I was able to tell her, you know, I don't want you to feel bad because I, right now I'm going to go in with Elevate. That's this one here in the actually since I was doing Rebel Palette, let's just go ahead and use Ruth. <laughs> Ruth is right here. And we're going to go right here underneath. The, oh, my God. Gosh, shut up. Sorry for saying shut up. That is like the best highlighter in my life. Oh my gosh. I'm going to just take this. Um, brush here. Let me get a little tiny brush so I can get into the corner. Yes, the inner corners of my eyes. I'm going to take this little pointy brush from the Preacher Girl palette brushes and um, Oh, mm. make me jump a little. <gasps> okay. And the Lord gave me the opportunity to minister to her and say, I know what you're going through. And sometimes when people tell you they know what you're going through, they don't. And sometimes you don't want to tell people that, especially if you've never been through it. You know, in my life, that's not the only strenuous thing I've ever been through. I've been through so many things that I don't share with the world, but I share on a one-on-one -on -one basis with the people that need it. Um, everything from miscarriages to to hair pulling and fingernail, but whatever it is, I, I've, I've been able to use those pain points in my life to bless somebody else and help somebody else in whatever situation they're in. And um, so I was able to tell this child, you know, this happened to me. I had a bald spot this size and her eyes opened like saucers because she could not believe that. And, and you know what she did? She showed me hers. She said, look, this is what I did. And, um, and I was so proud of her because of the courage it took for her to do that and to, to show that because it meant that she was going to be able to get help faster. And, and I was going to be able to support her and pray for her because let me tell you something, having been through that, I know that all it would have taken was somebody to say, how are you today? You know, what, what's going on in your life today? How, um, can I help you? You know, um, you don't have to bear all of this by yourself and that just, or just take it to Jesus. And I thank God that mine, it stopped. Okay. I gotta pick a color for the bottom. And usually I'm real simple with the bottom. I'm lit, I do browns, you know. But how about today? We could do blue, pink, or purple. Which one do you think you wanna see, Fanny? Purple. All right, Fanny said to do purple. So since she's behind the camera, we're gonna choose uh, Hadassah right now. Hadassah is this beautiful royal purple. And I'm gonna put that on the bottom of my eye. So you want to go real light at the bottom of your eye, one, because you don't want to cause wrinkles, and two, because you want to prevent fallout. Now, fallout means that if you're doing this and you're just going to town with the purple, it's going to fall on your face and then you'll have like, you know, like you got beat up by the train station. And... Uh, 
Oh, that purple is pretty. Do you see it? I don't know if you guys can, but in real life, it is everything. All right. Now, whenever I put like a big deposit of color like that, um, if it was just for the camera, it would be okay. But since it's for real life, I always take another brush and just softly blend and diffuse it. I hate harsh lines. I hate when lines are like, you know, I know boys like makeup and stuff. Makeup wasn't meant for boys. They need to just quit that. But um, <laughs> that's my personal opinion. But um, harsh lines just remind me too much of cross-dressing. And I don't want you girls to look like you're cross-dressing if you're not. If you are, then look like it. But if you're not, you know, look like a girl. All right. I'm just gonna put my eyeliner on right now. I'm gonna do it on camera because you guys always are like, oh my gosh, eyeliner is so hard to do. Okay, let me give you a little clue. Draw skinny lines. You can always make them thicker, right? Draw skinny lines and don't be afraid to lift your pencil off your face. You don't have to keep it on your face. Just do a little short line. No feather, don't do that. Small, smooth, thin strokes. Alrighty, right after this, I have an interview with Real Talk Kim, and I'm super excited about that. And um, so that's why one of the reasons why I'm making the makeup, you know, glass. Do you curl your eyelashes? You should. It's a good idea. All right, so let me finish up my story. So the young lady told me about um, what she's battling right now, and I felt so excited for her because to know that there are other people, and not just other people, to know that your pastor was in a similar situation and, and can identify and is telling you it's going to be okay and you'll be able to overcome this and God's gonna give you the power and the strength to overcome it. Let me tell you something. I could see the hope in her face and her mom's face and it just, it just meant so much to me that the Lord would even let me go through that in my own life to be able to minister to somebody else. And I don't know who I'm talking to. This might not be for any of you out there today. Maybe you don't pull your hair out, but you have other ways that you've had to deal with your stress. And your body has given you clues about how, you know, maybe you harm yourself in some way that, and it makes you, somehow the stress seem relieved. And I'm here to tell you that you don't need to do that, that the Holy Spirit is there to do that for you. Thank God that season of my life didn't last very long and, and pretty soon I was able to stop that habit and my hair grew back in. But girls, if you're a hair puller, let me give you some bad news. Your hair has a life cycle. Every follicle does. And gray hair, <laughs> gray hair is part of that cycle. So after you know a certain amount of decades or if you're genetically predisposed to gray hair earlier, your hair knows the trigger for when it starts turning gray. But if you pull your hair out and that cycle speeds up, that's where you're gonna get gray first. So, yes, on the crown of my head, on the top of my head, it's gray. It's, it started growing gray before anywhere else on my head started growing gray. So I knew exactly why. It's not a phenomenon in my life. It's just because I had pulled it out so many times. <laughs> my hair is like, wait. I've had to do a lot of work. I'm tired. So I'm excited for her. I was able to pray with her on the beach, but I want to, I want to just encourage anybody here. If you're still a nail biter, how do you, what do you do if you're facing that kind of stress and, and you find yourself doing self-harming kind of things that, that you wish you didn't do because after you pull your hair or bite your nails, aren't you upset when you look at it? Aren't you mad at yourself that you, you, if it is, you know, and there are girls who cut themselves and, and if you find a need to have a tattoo and feel that kind of pain and, 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 you know, and afterwards you're like, what was I thinking? Now I can't fix that. You know, now I, how am I going to fix that? It's going to take a long time. And 
and you find yourself in regret. And some of you, you know, by the way, some people find that kind of relief in, in relationships and in intimacy with people that they know or don't know in sexual activity that makes them feel loved and worthy and they don't it's it's against god's law for them and so if any of those things are a stronghold in your life and that's what they are by the way those things might start off one way people are addicted to being famous people are addicted to being liked being loved being affirmed you know, if any of the things we do is for the approval of man and other people, then we ain't really got to, to ask ourselves all the time, why am I doing this? And commit those things to God. Just give them to God. I'm just going to brighten up the teal here a little bit because I love that teal color. And I think it really makes my eyes, the brown in my eyes pop a little more. Ta-da! And then, as always, buff it, buff it, and blend it. So that is my story. But if that's you and you're going through something like that, maybe you, you, you don't know what it is. It's not as pointed as hair pulling, nail biting, drinking. Yeah, that glass of wine you have to have every day. You think it's because you like wine? No, it's because it relieves your stress and it makes you feel less frazzled or it makes you better able to, to deal with things that you're dealing with. And you don't need any other comforter. God has given you the Holy Spirit and he's given you the ability to self-regulate. He said it like this. He said, for, for God will keep in perfect peace the man, the one whose mind is stayed on you. That's what the psalmist said. And, they, and there's another scripture that says, whatsoever things are pure and lovely and of a good report and, and true and just, think on those things. And I feel like if that's what the Lord is saying to somebody today, wherever you are, whatever it is that you have to do, whatever it is that if you don't do it, you feel like your life is, you know, falling apart or whatever, to give that to the Lord, to, to, to begin to, to release those things and let them not be strongholds in your life. You know what's the first way to do it? And this is what I told this young lady. I said, figure out what your stressor is. Figure out what is what it is in your life that's causing you to be so overwhelmed that you you seclude yourself or you you know you withdraw yourself from community and you get into an alone place where you have to have the drink, pull the hair, bite the nails, whatever. Whatever, what is it that you have to do in secret? And your friends can't know about it. You know, identify what the stressor is and identify. So that would be the trigger. And then identify what your response to that trigger is. So mine was feeling overwhelmed for the things I was dealing with. That was my trigger. And my response was to bite my nails or pull my hair. I thank God that my hair grew back in. And I believe that that is the promise of the Lord. That if you know what it is and you give it to God and you, you know how you deal with it, you can say, Lord, this is it nobody else knows but this is what you know about me and this is this is what i want to give to you you know i used to preach a message about a lady named rispa who lost her sons and and she she guarded their dead bodies and she prayed and she fought off the wild animals as they hung her sons right they hung her sons she was um so, uh the king's concubine and and everything she had in the world with those two boys and her sons and they hung her boys and to, to be embarrassed they were dead and hanging there but she beat off the wild animals and the birds and she protected their bodies but the whole land was in a famine and she spread a, a cloth at the, the the base of the the place the rock where they hung her sons and she prayed and she told God she said don't let their death be in vain don't let this loss be for nothing Please send the rain. And the Bible says she stayed there fighting for them until the rains came. And when God sent the rain, she folded up her mat and she went home. And you know what that means to me? Whatever you've been through that feels like loss, whatever trauma, whatever abuse, whatever, you know, tough situations, whether your education, whether work, whether it's lack, stress, people bullying you, whatever it was that you had to suffer, tell the Lord, Lord, Lord don't let this be for loss. You know, send the rain. 
send, send away, let this thing that I went through be for good and not for evil. Use it for your glory. And, and even in that, that 30 years later, God used something that happened in my life to be able to, to reach down to somebody and drag them out of whatever they felt they couldn't get out of. And so that's what I want to just encourage you with today. If that's what you're going through, know that I'm praying for you and I'm asking you to identify your stressor. Don't say, look, it's just a bad habit. All bad habits start from somewhere. Figure out why is it a bad habit? What's the trigger and how am I dealing with it? And give it to God and say, God, don't let this be for loss. Don't let what I've been through and how I'm responding to it be for nothing. But let me be able to use that to bring glory to your name and to rescue a sister, rescue somebody else who's in the same position. So there you go. It's my Eve Magdala. I look from the Rebel Palette. I hope you like it. Isn't it gorgeous? Can you see it? Good. I hope you can get it in the camera because in real, in the mirror, mirror, I, mirror, mirror is what Katie calls her cam, um, mirror. It looks so bold and pretty. And I hope you try it. If you do try this look, you make sure and post it on Instagram and tag us at um, Rebel Palette 21 so we can see it. If you want to know where to go find these palettes, they're at creaturegirltv.com in the store. There's a really great bundle with both palettes, all the brushes and the makeup bag. And you want to get these and uh, i mean it's such a great ministry too anyway i hope you enjoyed this podcast today it was a little bit different and i'm sorry if the guys won't enjoy it as much but i hope it helps you i hope it blessed you if you're brave enough to write in the comments if you need prayer about anything if you need prayer about what you're fighting what you're battling simple things that might mean nothing to other people but are a big deal to you you can dm me or you can write it in the comments and we'll pray for you i love you don't you ever forget that you don't need a pulpit literally you can have a pulpit that looks like that you just need a message because if god calls you no one can uncall you love you preacher girls like it subscribe comment ring the notification bell i'll see you next time